Hello everybody and welcome back to Between Two Fans. It is your boys, Stevie P and Mr. Dan Scolds. It looks like a very triumphant Dan Scolds and we're going to get into exactly why he's uh, triumphant. Uh, it could be, could be a couple of, uh, of triumphs that we'll talk about uh, in this evening. But uh, welcome back to Between Two Fans. If you are new, this is where two sports fans basically talk rubbish for an hour but then every now and again a couple of hidden gems um gems come out and uh, i think last week we, we solved uh uefa's ucl uh format so we've done a champions league format review i think we've also solved various uh structural problems within SRA rugby over the last few months so basically you know we're changing sports you know one episode at a time yeah. um and speaking I like of changing call, i don't like to call myself a, a sports fan more of a sports prophesizer maybe we can call there it we go yeah so you know, you know, if you go back to sort of the ancient times and, and you know, the, the Greeks and they sort of sat there and, and, and basically wrote down all the various things that we've now adopted as as government and stuff like that. It's basically what we're the modern equivalent of when it comes to sport. <laughs> so, you know, that's we, 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 big names to come. We've got down in history. Um, we've got a lot of history, Stevie. So, Dan, last time we spoke, uh, you were planning on traveling to Wales to run over a mountain. Um, has the mountain been summited? Did you come down the other side? Talk to me through the debut marathon. Stevie, I'm alive. I'm almost in a wheelchair. Um, I feel like I've been walking on stilts for the last couple of days, but I can confirm Welsh mountains were conquered. Finished it six and a half hours on the feet, 1,900 meters up, 1,900 meters down, 45 meters, meters, 45 kilometers across um it was brutal 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 so, brutal so you technically wasn't just a marathon it was technically an ultra technically an ultra you know you are an ultra and, runner yeah your words not mine bro <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes everyone knows about it at the office and um yeah you've been walking um, around with the medal eh? just you know oh by the way i've, I've yeah, I a marathon should, this weekend, sure right? brought it my may yeah, may the fact that you're not wearing it now is actually very very poor <laughs> I, I cycled with this on my way to work this morning um but yeah no i'm i'm a bit of a physically broken but um mentally triumphant um so yeah very very stoked that, that managed to get that one in the bag don't know if i'll be doing another one anytime too soon but um well i think you are in that you're in that you're in that you're in that post-mortem stage like it takes apparently like a couple of weeks but when you know once you once your legs are back to normal then suddenly the sudden that apparently that's when the next uh uh, sign up starts again uh, yeah what's it a anyone who's born in the 90s is either having a kid getting engaged or training for a marathon eh? so i had to do the last one yeah but so the first two are firmly off the table for me at the moment so. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll leave we'll leave those ones lap aside <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's, it's sad isn't it that, that right now the prospect of running 42 kilometers is far more achievable than me finding a wife but uh, <laughs> we move we move <laughs> We move. It's a, we move. It's a sad <laughs> truth, but uh, hey, it is what it is. It is what it is. Married to the game, bro. It's, correct. Correct. There it is. You know, we don't have time. There's too much sport to cover, you know, and until I find someone that's going to, you know, let me watch my, you know, 40 hours of sport on the weekend, we're going to have issues. Um, <laughs> no, so no. the pursuit of happiness will continue. Um, yeah. But speaking of the pursuit of happiness, Dan, uh, the predictions. Let's get into it because I think there might be another triumph on the cards here. Uh a bit of a sketchy triumph. Very, very Let's close see. this week. But uh, take see. us through what is going on with what could be the greatest revival since I mean, this, 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 of the World this Cup is, in 2019. This is Istanbul. Okay, fair enough. I was going to go to Istanbul 2005. I had to try and find a South African example. Oh, no. and, and, and I was, I was, I must have I was, I was clutching straws there. <laughs> um, but yes, um, if you are new around here, we do three predictions and three different um sporting games um from the weekend um this last week we chose sharks versus claremont um in the challenge cup semi-final we chose um liverpool versus tottenham as well as bayern munich versus real madrid in the first leg of the champions league and this evening because we are recording on wednesday will be the second leg of that and um, we realized a bit of a mistake in that regard because when we released it you would have known the results so not fun not too much of a prediction when um you're really new alas let's get through them um so stevie sharks versus claremont we actually both went on sharks by five mm. i thought okay let me just outnumber this guy sharks will be a little bit more comfortable that went sharks by six ended up being a bit ropey sharks by one um might be the most undeserved win i've actually watched in a playoff game to be perfectly honest in terms of how poor they were throughout that most of the game 
Um, but then you, when you have a big time player like Sia Masuku, it doesn't matter, huh? Well, I mean, I mean, and, and, and you watch that last try, and you talk about big time players, and it, I mean, between the box kick from Grant Williams, the catch from Ibn Etzbeth, the offload from Vincent Tsuka mm, to mm, um mm, to Mapimpi, mm, mm. and you think those are all players that they were all you know big signings. A couple of them, are, I mean, like Grant yeah. Williams and and your arms have come through the ranks, but most of them signings to try and make them, uh, the, you know, put them where they are. Uh, and and good to see the likes of an Etzebeth and the, and Avengers Tuka, big name big name players yeah. coming to the fore when the going got tough. But yeah, Sia Masuku, absolute masterclass. Sia the source, uh, you know, he's just. I mean, and, not- and can we just talk about? Can we just talk about the way he he kicks a goal? And 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 I don't want to put it on the comparison, but he's got that Dan Carter ace type of he. You know, he <laughs> won't he won't he won't just slide down the middle or just curve it. In. He was hitting a couple outside of the boot, swinging yeah. them left to right. You're sitting there going, "This is and he's so far too exciting. Far he's too exciting." He's got that um, look, kind of um, calmness about him, bro. That's just I'm not phased. Like my heart rate doesn't really get that high. I'm just yeah. gonna. It's from the corner. I'm. I'm gonna slot it though. No stresses. Two. Two minutes left on the clock. All good. Um. You know. One point wins. But you know what? I've. I think is se- the real secret sauce is Katsuya Masuku. And it's a. It's a. It's a lost um, practice in in the rugby. Um. In the rugby world. Shoulder pads, bro. Give me a pad <laughs> off with shoulder pads, and he will cook, bro. Think of all Aaron, Aaron Cruden. Used to wear the shoulder pads. I feel Dan yeah. Carter used to wear the shoulder pads. Mornay Stain, you know, now we're talking about kicking accuracy. Yeah. Bro, you're a fly half. We know you don't love contact. Just wear the shoulder pads, bro. You know, he's got that little protection. Um, listen, shoulder pads is what got me through my rugby career because, you know, otherwise I was just getting And do you remember how big they were back in the day? Like, you were like, I mean, we were tiny and then you had these massive shoulder pads. You could barely get your rugby jersey over and you, you, you must look like absolute idiots. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I thought I was looked like thuggish. Thank you very much, Stevie. But um, I, I, I do believe that this might be the the reason why Sia Masuka is just um, can do no wrong at the moment. But, yeah. Anyways, we digress. That's the that was the first prediction of the weekend. So Stevie, you, no, look, I mean, um, you can move right. You can move right along if you want. I'm happy to digress. At this point <laughs> the show. Um, but second second match, um, Liverpool versus um, Spurs looked like a big um, blowout win. Four 0 Liverpool were up at one point. Mm-hmm. Spurs bringing back two goals. Um, Stevie, your prediction was two one. Mine was two 0 and I'd like to think my goal difference was a little closer. So well, you, I think you, you got the goal difference. To be fair, got the goal difference. So I'm gonna have to take that one away from you. Yeah, um, another another good comeback from Spurs. Eh? It's it's interesting if they could play the the the, the, the entire ninety like they do that last thirty. Yeah, they they could actually have gotten some good results because it was a squeaky bum time for Arsenal, and it wasn't quite ever like in jeopardy with you guys, but they did in that last twenty minutes throw, yeah. throw a lot at you. Yeah, they. I mean, both Liverpool and Spurs are actually renowned for conceding first so um it was a really it was a you know who 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 would kind of fold first and there was a bit of a it looked like Liverpool just had enough of a, a barrier to to hold them out um you know four goals you'd hope so um and then Bayern versus Real Madrid um, obviously at the time it was 1-0 when we we're chatting ended up 2-2 what a game for the ages and a repeat of that tonight um Stevie, yeah, we actually we actually can't go too we can't we can't go too long on that on on on, on the show tonight because that kicks off an hour and ten and I'm actually doing the watch long for it so okay. very looking forward to to that so we do have a bit of a deadline here because yeah. he's got to yeah. go watch either Luckily. Duke Bellingham get into a final or Harry Kane get one step closer to winning his first ever trophy. This this is this wasn't going to be on our predictions this week because we we know but what is actually your prediction for that? I don't know. So I've seen that Madrid are closing the roof. To try and make it that, that hectic atmosphere, Ooh. I think I I would be I wouldn't be surprised whichever way it went. To be honest, I mean Madrid are UCL royalty, and Ancelotti is just winning things with vibes and vibes only. Mm. Um, at the, the same Bayern time, Brothers. you know Bayern just they're they're, they're a quality side who have had a bad season. I mean Madrid have won the league, so maybe there's a bit of complacency there. Bayern, for example, mm. have officially lost the league. Um, and you know they're not supposed to leave the league. There's a little bit of turmoil in the club. They can't find a manager at the moment. Yeah. Um, so it I, would be I very. Think, I, I think Bayern are going to get it done, bro. I think they're going to win one 0 
I'd love to see. I, I tell you, I tell you what. Again, and and, and yes, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I'd love to see Harry Kane go and score a winner tonight and send them through. Listen, I think the obvious the bookies will have Real Madrid and for good reason, and that's a logical pick. I think most other days I just have this funny feeling. Um, I think um, it could well be a zero zero or one one draw. Otherwise, though, um, so it's pay- and then pens, eh? Yeah, pens will be pens will be interesting. Um, we've seen a bit of a mix because bag they still haven't teams. adopted our our golden goal. Just one man down after every t- after every five minutes, you know, yeah, UEFA yeah, just yeah, dragging their feet once again. Yeah, clearly not listeners of of the pod. But Stevie, for our prediction from last week's game, um, you went with two one Madrid. I went with one one, and I'm going to have to say the result trumps you you being um, on goals closer to the results. So. Listen, listen, it was 8-2, now it's 8-5, a little drawing back. One I'm going to have, going to, I'm going to have to start bringing in some, 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 some assistance on these. On these. I'm going to have to go, we have, we have to pick these but early in the week and I have to do a bit of research on this. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. Or, else we, or else we're going to have to go back to some sports that you don't watch. We need another golf week. It's PGA next week, okay, we're going to be doing some <laughs> golf predictions. <laughs> yeah, you know, if one, um, I guess, shout out to Lando Norris for getting his yeah. first. Yeah, I was about to say, and, none, and, and to be fair, none of us would have backed Lando Norris to have won the race. We wouldn't have got the, none of us would have got that one right anyway. I mean, you don't know my F1 predictions, bro. I would have been bang on, I think. Um, <laughs> but Stevie, let's quickly get into um, the rugby this past weekend mm. semi finals of both the Champions Cup and the Challenge Cup. Um, let's start with the Champions Champions Cup. Um, Leinster winning 20 points to 17, just um, squeezing out a victory at home versus a very hearty um, Northampton Saints who have just had an unbelievable season um, and bowing out, unfortunately, from um, the international competition. Obviously, it's all good shot in the premiership. Um, yeah, what were your thoughts on the game? So I think that, obviously, you know, Leinster, the way they started, um, in Northampton just had too much to do. And it's kind of... It's so high intensity. Yeah, yeah, no, it, was, it, was a, it was a great game to watch. Once Northampton learned that they're actually supposed to hold on to the ball, um, they were they were they were a decent match for for Leinster. And I think you know another five ten minutes things could have gotten a bit interesting. Leinster did most of the groundwork in the early stages. A hat trick from James Lowe. Um, to be fair, like not to take it away from James Lowe, and I know you will because you. Correct, correct. I will. You know I, I do not enjoy world. watching that hat trick. What a happy man in the watch along. But first, first ever hat trick in in the semi final. I mean, he's one of those guys. It's like, I mean, I would say this about largely about John van der It feels like it's either the wildest try I've ever seen or or walk ins. He like doesn't yeah. score anything in between. Um, it's a little bit feels like the same with James Lowe. But he when you get when you see someone on the score sheet that frequently, you can't start just denying that they get in the right yeah. positions. But I mean Jamie Gibson Park. Jeez. Yeah. I mean he, him, he is him and Dupont are really just setting the precedent of what a scrum off has to be. I know because I mean somebody I think I think it was James Love in fact on the said he said after the game he said you know Gibson Park's the best number nine in the world and everyone was obviously up in arms and saying no chance doesn't touch Dupont and stuff like that. And he's I don't think I, would go as gap, far, I was about to say I wouldn't go as far as saying he's better than Dupont, but I don't think it's as outrageous of a shout. He's not as, better, as than, he's not better than Dupont, but he's probably top three rugby players in the world, and Dupont's number one. At the one. moment, yeah. I mean, look, look, look. look I mean, just you know, the way he played that game. I mean, James Lowe scored a hat trick, the first ever hat trick in the semi final. Didn't get man of the match. Yeah, and rightfully so, because Gibson yeah. Park was just a different level. If you ever he, want to see a master, club, yeah. to be honest, as a young scrum half, watch that performance. You don't watch Dupont because you can't do what Dupont does. It's like watching A.B. de Villiers, you know? A coach can tell you, this is what A.B. de Villiers does. I said, yeah, but I can't do that. Okay? He's a freak. Dreams, bro. Let, yeah. let, let the brother's dream. This is 360, bro. It, to be fair, yeah. I feel like, you know, it's actually comparable. Dupont yeah, is, it's just, is he's direct. Just, you, you know, the average person can't do what he does. So, so yeah. just... Yeah. Model yourself a Gibson Park. That might be a, that might be a achievable. Yeah, that might attainable. be a, attainable, yeah. Um, but it was a great game. And I think Leinster, for me, look a beatable side. Um, mm-hmm. But obviously still sort of favours in the going to thing. But again, there's chinks in that armour. And, and yeah, it'll be interesting and, and to see if they can finally get the monkey of the back in the final. It does seem like that habit of... go. I mean, we know how Irish teams, how that they start with that high intensity and the Leinster teams start with that insane intensity. And we have to just mm-hmm. go back to last year's final... Um, in the, in the Champions Cup, they, in like 
10 minutes, they were like 20 points up or something stupid. Mm. And then only for that to be reeled in. And they kind of rely on breaking the back of the opposition early and then not um, maintaining that um, throughout. So I agree. I do think there is a chink in that armor. Um, and it's going to be up to to lose, to expose that Stevie, getting the job done versus Harlequins at home. So both the favorite teams, both the home teams um, getting it done. Um, but it has to be said, a very valiant effort from Harlequins. I mean, what a, what a season in Europe and just an exciting team to watch, just like never say die attitude um, personified for, from all of them. Um, I think they were just at the end outclassed by, mm. you know, what is really an obviously just on paper better team um, than them. But, you know, the, the heart that they showed, I think, you know, they're such a likable team um, for me. Well, they're just, such a, they're just such a wild card, aren't they? You know, you just yeah. never know what, I mean, they're a team that, on their day can can be pretty poor on their day can be one of the best teams in the world and uh mm. tyron green once again um i threw it out there a couple of weeks ago saying i think you should be on the block radar um and mm. he once again put in another big performance so i, I really enjoyed watching him loves counter-attacking loves to get mm. to have the ball in his hands and still a young player so i'm hoping that he might sort of pop up on the block radar so it was, it was good to, it was good to see him playing playing well again yeah i've enjoyed harlequins they're and I, I mean, Joe Marley, I mean, it was a silly thing for him to do. I don't think it really ended up costing him as much as, as some people might suggest. But uh, yeah, pretty, pretty stupid thing. And I think that's a bit of a warning to, to other people. But yeah, a good, two good semifinals. I guess the main thing, you know, you kind of walked away sitting there saying, well, it wasn't like, either, like any of them didn't deserve to be there. You know, they, they earned their stripes. They got themselves to a semifinal and they provided a worthy uh, semifinal. It is the final we we might not won from a. It's, we've seen it before. We've seen these guys win, but in terms of seeing the two best teams in the competition, yeah. we have won juggernauts, teams. right? Yeah, you you won you won juggernauts um, in the final. This is it's going to be fireworks. I mean, it's just going to be so intense, and it, it's quite interesting to look at the differences between club rugby knockout versus World Cup knockouts. Where I think World Cup knockout people tend to go into their shells a little bit more and play more conservative, but it almost feels the opposite for club rugby, which is just mm. epic. You know, it's just been absolute um, mayhem. And just like, I think they just given a little, they have that extra bit of more time. I mean, this is essentially, uh, it'll be interesting to see if it holds up for the final. Um, I imagine it will because of the intensity that both teams love playing at. Um, I mean, very interesting from Toulouse actually um, dropping Thomas Ramos from um, their team and um, playing um, King uh, Blair Kinghorn um, at 15, kind of showing an intent, you know, Thomas Ramos being the number one kicker, but, you know, wanting, you know, we want to score tries here. We're not just, whereas in a World Cup um, for your country, you make sure you kind of have your best kicker on yeah. the park um, at any given point. So I think they might switch that up for the final. I just think... Well, it's, it's, it's an interesting one because I think Blair Kinghorn just brings so much... To the team from I mean for example the aerial threat and and if and mm. Northampton obviously is probably quite a good kicking game and if you've got a Blair King on and and they will kick to deep to him they will have big chases um, so I think that the aerial threat you know I think it's a big toss up between Thomas Ramar and uh, and Blair King on because he's so so good in the air and mm. he brings a lot of physicality and they're going to need that against Leinster to be fair so it's a yeah. big it's a big big course to make nice think, nice think, nice problems they'll to have 14, though. they'll put him on the wing I think they'll put yeah. King on on the wing um, Ramos could probably also. I mean, Ramos can play 10, but obviously... Um, yeah, but, yeah, he is a baller, um, Ramos, so he can, can play, play across the... Yeah, you, you, you can defenses. find a way to, to, to fit him in. Um, by the way, have you seen the state of Blair Kinghorn's nose? It's taking about three right turns um, and going on a roundabout and then finding its way in the middle of a kind of spaghetti junction. It is well broken in like the last seconds of the game. Jam, poor bloke. So I hope, I hope he's actually able to. Or oh, I'm sure you'll probably just have to. Ah, it's a broken nose. Wrap like. that boy up. That's actually a point. Have you ever noticed somebody who's like not played due to a broken nose, like fractured cheekbones? That that keeps people off, and like jawbone yeah. and stuff like that. But a nose, you very rarely hear somebody that's not playing because of the nose. No, almost, almost never. And it's not like football where you can just put on the, you know, the Mister Incredibles mask um, 
to kind of protect it because you know kind of with steel um, yeah, there's always but, a standard Europe playing against some random team, and there's always that one defender that had a mask on. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, enough, enough tape will fix anything, bro. Enough Correct. tape will fix anything um, in the game. But um, yeah, Stevie, let's let's and then Challenge Cup. Obviously, we touched on the um, Hollywood Bet Sharks, um, thirty-two points to thirty-one. Um, very very slow start. Essentially, Masuku just making all the kicks in the first half, um, getting them to the break, um, not completely behind, but largely out of the game. And then a, a late comeback. Again, the person who you said was flying under the radar, Vincent Koch actually getting over the whitewash. Um, but they were they were on the ropes there, the Sharks. I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, they might have thought it was going to be a bit more of a canter than it was. And Clermont do have a good history in the competition and, and came out fighting. I think will be disappointed in themselves that they didn't get the job done. Yeah, look, I think if Sharks defend like that, they lose the final. Um, and that'll be a, there'll be a lot for them to think about going home because the defensively were not good enough. Look, I really enjoyed the Claremont attack. It was multifaceted. It was quick. It was organized. And they found really good space and they found the openings. At one stage, that Sharks defense was like a sieve. There was just, there were so many gaps in it. They were steaming through. And, you know, at one stage, I thought, you know, there's there's no chance. They're done here because they didn't, they just, they just weren't in it. Um, mm-hmm. So credit to them for... And, and for, it's, for it's being a Sharks that we've actually come to know somewhat. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, it was it was a bit of a game where you saw the the shark season summed up in a game, you know, yeah. how bad they can be versus how good they can be. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I think, you know, a better side puts them away and doesn't allow them to come back. So I think that it'll be interesting to see when it comes to, and I suppose I mean, well, the Challenge Cup is is an interesting one because, it's, you know, a lot of these teams aren't necessarily the top teams in their leagues and stuff like that because otherwise they'll be playing in the Champions mm-hmm. Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, sometimes you see those those kind of results where you think, well, a better team will put them away, but also at the same time, these teams are more on par. So that's what kind of makes it interesting. Yeah. Um, so it's been quite interesting to see sort of the differences between teams who are lower down in various leagues and how they kind of compete, because that's always the, the big barometer, isn't it? You know, you look at these leagues and you think, well, where's top 14 versus URC versus Premiership? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you're seeing, especially in the semi-finals, the Champions Cup with three di- all the three different leagues represented and not them be much between them. But hopefully yeah. it does seem to be quite a good um, level between the various competitions that, and there isn't this massive disparity between between mm. teams but Sharks have to agree, agree. And and that's that. a, it's a good thing right we have mm. French and Irish a South African and a English team out of all finalists in the top in the top and second um, European league so it does yeah. show that I think the obvious one is like South Africa not having a team that can compete for the Champions Cup as it currently is largely I think due to not just squad sizes, but the travel is just ridiculous um, yeah. for, for South African teams. Um, and I don't know if what the you know answer to that is now, um, maybe a discussion for another podcast, but um, it sets up a great final, obviously. Um, the second one was Gloucester beating Benetton. And I've really grown to love this Benetton team this season, much like we've grown to love the, the Italians in recent years. And they've just, I mean... Reno Smith has been such a good Pretty player cool. for them. Yeah. Um, the ex-cheaters man, he scored such a lovely try on the weekend. Um, but Gloucester getting it done, 40 points to 23. Um, and, you know, as you said, they're not sitting pretty in the, in the premiership, but they've just prioritized this. They think, if you think, you know, what's the best, what's our best chance of qualifying for the Champions Cup? It's winning, winning the Challenge Cup. It's similar, similar to Sharks. They're kind of thrown away, I think, the their... Um, you know, league um, in the premiership and said, we're going to completely focus on this. And fair enough, they, they got the job done um, and fairly convincingly, STB. Yeah, I, I, I think that, I mean, I was, I was obviously rude to Benson. I would have really liked to have seen him go through that final. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, at the same time, it was nice to to have, again, as, as you mentioned, to have a different uh, nation, different uh, league represented in, in mm-hmm. one of the in, in different finals. So it is it is quite cool from from that perspective as opposed to having an all URC final, which would be cool for the URC. But the whole point of the European Champions Cup, the EPCR, is you get to see different leagues playing against yeah. each other. So it makes for a nice final. Um I think Gloucester will obviously have a very big support base being um um being being UK based, but not London, not a London club. So um down, uh, the sh- no, and the Sharks Sharks fans came out on 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 Saturday. Um 
So hopefully, hopefully there will be a decent shark support. Um, and I think I think it should be a great atmosphere there. I think it's, it should be a good game. Lots of you know World Cup winners on display from the shark side. So it'll be cool to watch for for any of the rugby fans. Sometimes you get these champion Challenge Cup finals and they're kind of a little bit ob in mm-hmm. inverted commas. And I don't think this is necessarily an ob uh, final because there's two good teams that have that have that have got good pedigree. Yeah, and with all things going smoothly, you'll see um, myself there live in the flesh. So. Um, we won't unveil too much more, but um, stay posted um, for that. Stevie, that's a good way to um, transition into um, this weekend's fixtures. The URC is back um, and it is um, crunch time. A couple more game weeks to go before um, it's the end of the season and the knockouts um, and that top eight race. Very, very heated. Um, big, big fixtures. I think the biggest one um, is going to be the Bulls, Glasgow Warriors. Um, that's just going to largely define, you know, where a lot of the where the kind of final and semi finals will be played. Those both teams not really having to worry about the the race itself, but a lot to play for for both of them. I think as long as you can stay at home, um, you have a much better chance. We've seen in the URC how much home advantage plays. But otherwise, Munster Connacht, another a big game. Munster wanting to get high up on the log. Connacht looking to stay in the top eight, currently sitting sixth. Mm. Um, Leinster, Ospreys will be interesting to see what team Leinster put out for that. It sounds sounds that like they're going to go pretty strong for the rest of the season. That was what Leo Cullen was uh, oh, really? expecting. Yeah, basically okay. said that they're going to look to go pretty strong. They want to try and get back that first. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. Line. It's 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 tough. With, it's complete luck, right? If you're Ospreys, you could have played them last week just happened to and you would have played literally Leicester's B team and you would have quite you know fancied your chances but Leicester's A team I mean do Ospreys have a chance I don't think no. so you know it's, it's no, this just- is this is a this is a huge weekend for for me as a Lions fan because you know there are hopefully going to potentially be losses for Benetton um uh connect yeah, yeah, yeah. and Ospreys. the Sharks you see I don't think the Sharks are going to play a very very strong team. They're going to, I think they're going to rest up their players. I think they'll rest them up this weekend and then give them another run around next weekend before, before the final. But I mean, maybe not. I know they're really back in South Africa and training. Um, yeah. I think, or, I think the problem is you kind of got a bit of an awkward thing now where you, you want to rest players, but you don't want to players to, to switch off. Lose that you know? So it's, it's an interesting like balance you have to try and strike between giving them and keeping yeah. your best players fresh but at the same time, you've got to keep the battle hard in inverted commas and keep yeah. and keep you know keep jelling, you know, not because again, I think maybe they might have rested, but I think you also look at that performance and you think, shit, that wasn't actually good enough. We need mm-hmm. game time as a team to try and fix those mistakes. <laughs> I love that you're and, manifesting this so that sharks put out their correct, best correct. <laughs> plum tree, plum tree watches this. So so Mr. Mr. J- yeah, Jono, just go and uh, pick all the buggers. You can rest them next week. Um, I need you. I need to down Benetton. I need the Lions to pitch up and get a bonus point victory against Cardiff, just to put it as in and amongst the connect uh, Benetton's. Uh, I'll I'll just play Scarlets. I mean, Scarlets so just do do something. Yeah, I just need miracles out here, dude. Yeah. Um, and also, to be fair, um, Drags are hosting Stormers, and Stormers have on the road have been shocking this season. So, and Drags have been putting in a couple of decent performances recently. So. Yeah, that's actually not a you know foregone conclusion either. So a lot, as you said, it's not the teams who are it's not a lot of the top eight teams who are in contention for playing each other. But mm. what that does mean is that there could be um, you know if like the Lions, there could be a lot of losses. Um, I don't I don't think there's going to be a round where the players are going to watch as many other matches. Yeah, as this weekend, you know, yeah. as a Lions, as a Lions uh, fan, you're going to be sitting there on Friday night. You're going to be sitting there watching Edinburgh Zebra going. Well, what are the chances of Zebra pulling off a miracle? Yeah, you know, you'll you'll be you'll be sitting there before your game that you know that the, the three o'clock Sharks Benson as you're warming up, you'll be sitting glancing over, going, "Well, what's what's going on there?" As soon as, like, as, soon as your yeah. game's done, you're opening a beer, TV's on, you're not leaving the stadium, you're watching Lens to Osprey. You're going to be sitting there going, "Shit, what's actually going on here?" Like, yeah. so it's going to be it's going to be it's going to cool that. Yeah, I love this part of the season because that's where, that's it, right? You're trying to you got that um, you know that Zach Galifianakis meme where all the the numbers yeah like, you know, moving around, right? That's moving it. Around. Every, that's every exactly single try, it. it's like okay, so now Edinburgh at this point and it's moving around. So and no, you know what's going to happen to the Lions? They're not going to make top eight because of the number of victories. 
It's it, yeah, it's so. It, I, I, you're speaking I, I, I it into know. existence, Stevie. You're I'm looking. Speaking. Well, I'm looking at it now, and you just look at Edinburgh with ten wins, Benetton with nine wins, Ulster nine wins, Connacht nine wins, Ospreys eight wins, and Lions with seven. And it's bullshit because you look at the points difference. The Lions' <laughs> points difference is unreal. Despite yeah. losing the last game, it's unreal. The only teams that have better points differences are the top four. Bullshit. Yeah, you guys just love having a bit of a vibe when you do win, but. Got to win a bit more frequently, Stevie. Got to win a bit more frequently. I mean, hey, the fact trying. that we're, we're, has we're feeding our kids, we're feeding our players hot dogs guys is actually crazy. Um, because, like, thinking of the form of the two teams, I wouldn't have wouldn't have actually pegged them down for that. Yeah, um, that, that that early tour when we like lost every game by like one point was a killer. You know, we won yeah. two of those games, and all of a sudden, first of all, we'd be sitting pretty in the top four, top eight. But and we'd have any more wins. Sure. It, anyway, anyway, sure. it's gonna be a good weekend of rugby. I'm actually gonna go to the park next week. I haven't yeah, been there exactly. since the end of COVID, so I might have to go and uh, just drop in, you know, get them, you know, just get let them let them be bestowed in my presence, you know, go and uh, sell the house. You know, it's good for the players to meet me, you know, after you know, slamming them online. Um, be nice to go and uh, and, and and make my uh, frustrations known. Um, yes. Last time I saw any of them was actually Cash Renorian at uh, a super well URC launch where we said to him, wow. "So you can give me money now for the off season, or are we still broke?" And he politely declined to do to 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 comment. Okay. Um, okay. Poor guy. Well, we you're still here. Hey, you're still going. 2024, we're still around. So we still move. Uh, we still go. We, we move. Um, Stevie, let's get into um, the football. And I feel like we don't have to get into the football. I mean, you know, as, I mean, as, as I a, think I think we do. And let's start where you don't want to. And the absolute drubbing of Man United, Crystal Palace, clapping Yokes 4-0. Um, listen, I know what it's like. We lost to Palace at home 1-0. Um, you know, know there's certain like. teams that lose one nil to Palace, and there's certain teams that lose four nil to Palace. Um, and with Chelsea winning five nil versus West Ham, they have absolutely they've just shot on ahead of you there, Stevie. Um, both on fifty four points, Chelsea in seventh, United in eighth. But again, where's the where's the number of wins being the difference here? We've won more games in them. Oh yeah, you now, need, now I need to switch here. I need URC yeah. in the in the Premier. No, you can't you can't have it both ways. We can't have it both ways. But I mean, that is wild. I'm sorry, but Chelsea, the sta- You guys are both horrible, but Chelsea are really really bad. Yeah, but we're in a final here, so like our season could still yet have a little bit of a of a savior. I could not give a continental about the league right now, which is why, I mean, thankfully I barely watched Crystal Palace. I, I was just noticing goals at the corner of my eye and it was a lot of them to notice, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I honestly, for, for the last month, I could not care about, about the league. Because first of all, Europa's cuck um, and going to Europa can derail any sort of chance of having a decent season. Listen, um, you, you, you haven't gotten close to, well, you were in, wait, you were in the Champions League this season. Jeepers, that was a yeah, long time. Yeah, I was about to say, whoa. Whoa. Well, then you haven't been in Europa for a while. We had our worst Champions League season ever. Like, relax. Whoa. <laughs> Memorable. So we're gonna have Memorable. our we're gonna have our usual every four year Champions League sabbatical. We'll be top four next year. And then we'll, and then we'll, you have we'll Jaden like Sancho, Jen Sancho in the Champions League final, potentially going on to win it. I mean, it's it's headache central there. Um yeah. Look, I, I think I still I was I will, as much as I think Ten Hogs had an absolute disaster of a season, I will, I still back him in the Sancho scenario because I think really? Sancho's petulant. Yeah, I think he's just all he had to do was be the bigger person and instead he, it was easy for him to run away in Germany and then to just put his hand up, admit that he wasn't playing well, admit that he wasn't training well, not go behind people's back and just get on with it. So I mean I mean for him, he maybe he also had a look at what was going on behind the scenes at United and was like, I'm also not buying into the project, so I'd rather ostracize myself. So I mean it's worked out kind of for him, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I think it's worked out for both. I mean, I mean, if you if you to to and, and get some of the money back, then then whatever. You know, the big thing I think United is that it's been far too much player power for the last few years, and it's, yeah. and it's a disaster. Agreed. And you know, when I read a report the other day, which is apparently you know, reckon that nobody's unsellable this week, this this transfer window. There's like groups of player, core groups of player that they want to keep, but basically, if somebody comes in with like 120 million for Bruno, they'll be like, cool, cheers. Yeah. And I mean, and I think it's a, I, I think I'm not, I'm not I'm not I'm not adverse to the the the, the, the idea. You know, yes, there's some big players Casimiro. in the squad, but. Casemiro, gotta go. 
Yeah, probably. I mean, he's, uh, he's legs, signed apparently. off. Bro. He has absolutely signed off. He had he had some moments last season, and you know, but he, he's he's out of there. He hasn't he's come back from that injury. Literally you know? a shadow uh, of what he used to be at Real Madrid, and uh, that is literally a culture of winning versus a culture yeah. of everyone looking left and right and not knowing who the leader in this in the team is. Yeah, I think I think this season we've seen his age, not so much, and, and it was like he's only a year older, but he had that injury, and it's amazing how players can be great at a good age, but if they get an injury, it's it's that when you get those injuries at that age, can they then come back from them? You know, because and do they want can, as well? Like yeah, as well, exactly. You know, they don't quite have the same drive when you're 24 and you or 21, 22, and you do your ACL for example, and you've got your entire career ahead of you. You are working day and night. You are desperate to get back. Yeah. But then you look at look, but then look at someone like Zlatan. In a, also a struggling Man United. Remember him coming back from his injury yeah. as quickly as possible. Yeah, That's the we, can't, we can't talk about Zlatan. He's just not human. That He can't is the mentality goat. I, correct. <laughs> correct. I mean, he must be one of the best men- mental sort of players and mentality-wise that the game's ever seen. I mean, you know, just even the, I mean, different sport, but Circulisi's injury. Mental is so much of yeah. believing that you're going to get better quickly. Um but yeah, I think a, a revamp of that United team is is highly, highly necessary. Um, I mean, people are saying your player of the season award is probably going to go to Diego Dallo. And has he played that well? Not really. He's been, yeah, he's been good. He's not he's been, been like, mediocre. He's been good in the bad bunch. The problem is, I mean, for me, I'd probably give it to Garnacha. I think he's, him and Bruno have probably been the. the no, he's actually been impressive as an honor, actually. After having a horror start, yeah, the problem, yeah, horror, the problem, the problem is so, so interesting that recency bias will probably save him because people will forget what he did in the first six months, um, but he's gotten yeah. a lot better. He almost, and I think you know, and, and, and I think that's for me the only thing I'm looking at now is okay, cool. So Anon is getting there, he's kind of settled, cool. Hopefully that's him for a big season next year. Harry Maguire is settled into a system, looking back to his best. So you know, given the fact that we probably need like four new centre backs, him playing that's well nice. is at least a good thing because if you can, if you offload. Lindelof and then Evans and are flipping half the old package and you keep a Martinez, Maguire, even if Iran probably needs to go and you can add somebody mm-hmm. else in at least just in the going, okay, well, at least, you know, if he's going to be a third choice, he's playing well. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a mass clean out. I'm very interested to see what happens. Um, I think Ten Hag keeps his job by the simple fact that there's very little out there. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, no, look, he, look at Bayern. Yeah, Bayern, he, Bayern are about to be in the well, Champions League final and they can't get a manager. Next, I think... <clears throat> True. I think I think next season's um, the the real test of Ten Hag. You know, you showed first season bounce, cool. You cha- you qualified for Champions League. Second season weren't able to back it up. Went in the Champions League and kind of even given time to develop your squad. Third season is when people really start measuring what you've done. And to be honest, for me, yes, trophies buy you time. If it wins the FA Cup, it'll buy in time. But league performance buys you more time. If you oh, were yeah. top four this season, and we saw it with Klopp, Klopp only won his first um, trophy, I think, in his fourth year at the club, um, and it was because we had reached Champions Champions League final. We were now well, there was only one season that we didn't quali- continually qualify for the Champions League, so we could see that the trajectory, right? And the trajectory is really measured in um, league performance because that's the. Van Hol- I mean, Van Hol got sacked the day after the FA Cup final. Yeah, and but that so was when, because when, was when the FA Cup league. came in on Monday and said, "Cool, thanks," and no one complained though. No one complained. No, no, and and, and no one said they're going. That's unfair. Everybody went. Well, yeah, we were crap. We we you know yeah. we found our way to the FA Cup final. We beat Villa in it because you know? a team because a club like Man United shouldn't be just scraping by in the league, coming eighth and going for an FA Cup. That's not the club you want to lead, right? Um, yeah. But let's. It touch would be on funny something. though if we do if we do if we do burgle ourselves a trophy and have a better season than Arsenal from a trophy perspective. Up the Ten Hag. Or well, and Liverpool for that matter. Um, you gotta care about cup at least, you know. Yeah, no, we have got something. A trophy in top four probably outweighs a trophy in no top four. It definitely even does. if it is a worse trophy. It definitely does. Whereas Arsenal um, will have just top four. Yeah. Um, but getting into some of the other big fixtures, Man City blowing um wolves out of the water, Erling Haaland with the hat trick. Um Biak. coming back. Um Villa dropping um Points to uh, a one 0 loss to Brighton, which kind of levels out the Spurs loss to Liverpool. That top four race is still not dead in the water. I mean, by virtue of the numbers, Liverpool is still in the title race, but sitting on seventy eight, uh, Man City eighty two, 
and at least you basically come you, at least you're out of the the, the, the top the, four the, race. top four race you are you are <laughs> i think officially uh, but, but no, they can't catch you you're fine yeah you're fine no we're fine um but then arsenal also just doing the business versus bournemouth at a comfortable three nil win at home um Shane, they're not letting go, hey, the, the Arsenal fans. Have you noticed? I'm seeing Instagram stories, your move, City, and I'm like, guys, City are not even watching your games. Yeah, I, I, like, I think City I, can for a time. Keep, think... keep, keep clutching on, but City are not even, they're not bothering with watching what Arsenal's doing. They, they, they're so comfortably going to run in, I reckon. It's, I mean, you know, you, going to be. Got, that's what you've you got to do, though, right? You've got to try and create a bit of hype and pressure, but. Yeah. Oh, as but I, I mean, said, Arsenal play United this weekend, City play Fulham. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> City Fulham away at least. I mean, I was actually trying to get tickets for this game in the hope that Liverpool would be in the title race and I'll be able to support Fulham, but I'll probably support City at this point. Um, <laughs> and then Villa Liverpool, which would be which would be big. Um, Liverpool don't really have much to play for uh, um, anymore. I mean, statistically, as we mentioned, the Prem, but that's you know out of, really out of the question. Villa need to get the business done, and they also playing. Um, they're playing tomorrow. Well, a win for them puts them in Champions League, I think, mathematically. I think does, but they also have the Conference League on Thursday. So yeah, they're going to be, they're gonna be some tired course. legs. I think they're down Lucky. as well. It is on Monday, though. It is on Monday. So they have a bit of time to recover. Um, United-Arsenal. Stevie, you you ch- chatting a lot of shit. This is your opportunity. I mean, you ruined Liverpool's season. Just go oh, ahead. I said, and... You guys are just disrupted, we... bro. You don't want to win yourself. Say... You just want others to lose. What did I say when before that semi final? I said we will lose to Chelsea and then we'll beat Liverpool. And uh, you know, I, I, so I think you know we'll lose to Crystal Palace four 0 We'll probably beat Arsenal this weekend. Um, it's it's such a it's such a lose lose as a United fan because you know a lose a loss will 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 give um, Arsenal the chance of potentially going on and winning the league. And, you know, there was a big United Arsenal rivalry back in the day, back in the day. Arsenal fans did calm down and thinking that they're much better than us. We haven't been rivals in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, but a win for United, like, puts the final nail in the coffin. So it's like, cool, well, we've dusted Arsenal, but at the same time, we just handed the, the league to, to City. But, I mean, as a United fan, mm-hmm. when, when, when the three in the title race are Arsenal, City, Liverpool, it doesn't get any worse. You know, yeah. those are the only, those are the three teams and lead, if you're going to go back traditionally, that United yeah. fans will not want to win the league, you know. Yeah. So, no, it's, it's, but it's I would only... I would enjoy wiping the smiles officially off Arsenal fans' faces. Yeah, I'm just saying, guys. Imagine being so shit that first of all you bottle the Champions League, you bottle the league, and you you lost to us. That's how shit you are. I almost That's think that's gonna be that my Hog more time a win versus Arsenal than an FA Cup win. <laughs> um, it's just it's that it's that big. Um, but also at at the bottom, Stevie, um, Luton coming up going away to West Ham. Obviously, David Moyes announcing that he'll be leaving West Ham at the end of the season. I mean, what a... Yeah, mutual consent, eh? Yeah, I mean, I just don't think West Ham have respected that nearly enough. He took them in the second stint with the club from like 16th to, I think, a top seven and a top eight finish and Euro- a European Conference League. Like, what? And I know the last, I know the last two league campaigns have not been great from them, but... But because like, you put all your eggs, because you won yeah. the Conference League, and you were in your season because you won the Conference League. Like you yeah. didn't want to do well in the in last season. You all you like no one remembers if you came twelfth, yeah, last or tenth, or ninth, or you won, a, you won the Conference League. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I, I just think he's been disrespected. I mean, the Conference League manager winners go Jose Mourinho, David Moyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> equal, company equals equals equals. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then also big game Forest versus Chelsea. Um, Forest three points um, currently ahead of Luton. yeah, and, and had um, their and um, had their Forest. appeal turned down, so they officially will not. Will those 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 deducted points will remain? Will remain. So uh, Chelsea again, on one a, of those things. A win yeah. for them could almost be enough to stay up. Yeah, yeah. I think I think they will do it. I just think they or they're a better team. Then Luton, Luton, I think deserved to go down compared to them, especially because of the points deductions. Um, but Chelsea are on a bit of a hot form, and again, we've spoken about it. We have no idea what Chelsea will turn up. They could lose four nil, um, yeah, or they could lose five nil. So, um, to be honest, the biggest thing they're playing for is Cole Palmer's golden boot at this point. Um, mm-hmm. But things are starting to click. It feels, we think, maybe, which is worrying because I don't want that to happen. Um, but Stevie. 
Let's quickly touch on last night's game, Champions League semi-final, second leg number one. Um, Dortmund going away to PSG, doing the business. Matt Hummel's yes. third oldest um, semi-final goal scorer um, heads home, and I mean PSG. You've got to feel a little bit um, sorry for them hitting the woodwork six times. Well, um, I'm busy watching Fiorentina yeah. versus Bruges on the TV in front of me, and I think Fiorentina have hit the bar about ten times in the last ten minutes. <laughs> but they're still losing, so <laughs> unlucky. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe a remake. But um, yeah, PSG there. Champions League woes continue. Um, but this Dortmund team just seemed like a, a tough nut to crack. I mean, it's not a star-studded um, team, not a lot of household names there. Um, and after Marco Royce announcing um, he'll be leaving the club at the end, is this his final swan song? Imagine getting it done, um, getting the Champions League at the end. And we could see a repeat of the 2013 final, which he lost which was also versus Bayern, which is also at Wembley, which is where the Champions League final will be this season. So it could be an exact um, replay of, of that game. Um, but yeah, what, it would what be, it would be a very cool final. I, 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 I've got a feeling that, I don't know why, I've got a feeling if Madrid go through, they kind of probably beat Dortmund quite comfortably, but I think Bayern are a bit more of a leveler just in terms of that German rivalry. I think Dortmund can get up playing against yeah. the Bayern probably more than they can against the Madrid. Um, yeah, and they'll be a lot more confident. Their, their big, biggest asset is actually just how tight their defense has been, right? I mean, mm. two clean sheets. Like, yes, PSG hit the woodwork six times, but two clean sheets clean in the semi-final. You, you almost never see that. That's insane. Um, and you that this is a team with Kylian Mbappe um, in it. You know, Vitinha Dembele, who, um, you know, actually hasn't been elusive goal scoring but they you know they have people who can score goals i just think that psg team they went from over star studded to like now the drop off between mm. finishing and Kylian mbappe to the rest of them is just it's it's massive like Kylian mbappe yeah, I, I do i do i do think long-term and he just he passes off and someone mucks it up yeah i, I do think long term I, I i think the psg strategy might be better you know, I do think that, you know, the whole Galacticos on, on steroids type approach just didn't work. There's far too many egos. So I think that long term, this might be a better idea, um, you know, but you've got to still have that quality. You've got to find that 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 balance of finding the superstars who are still young and still, I mean, look, Madrid mm. have got that down to a T, this current Madrid side, where, you know, there are some, there's some big stars, but there's, you know, the Ballon d'Or winners not coming out of Madrid at the moment. You know, there's, there's not necessarily, you know, mm -hmm. you look, yeah, I don't think so. I think, well, if it is again, it'll be kind of all hype. You know, he's been, he's been yeah. good this season, but yeah, the beginning of the season, maybe. But yeah, you know. but this um, is the thing. So, but we're talking about Jude as like the next big thing. You know, I mean, you know, I don't think too many people are walking down the street at the moment saying Jude Bellingham is the best footballer in the world. No. I don't think they're saying that about too much of that that um, that Madrid side. But like, I feel like mainly he's absolute world class. Yeah, and goes under goes under the radar. So I think that they've they've got that nice sort of um, composition of yeah. I mean, they're, world class they're, they're players, understated. Yeah, they've been reading Vinicius since he was 17 years old. Like yeah. he's he's been waiting to come to his prime. Was there when Ronaldo was there? You know, Benzema, Bale. Like he's learning from the best, right? Came from Brazil, mm. and now look at him. He's he's arguably top top three, top five in the world. So um, yeah, it's it's. I mean, tonight's all about just the mentality monsters of Madrid versus I think what will be an upset if Bayern win but also you know it's not like they're, they're shy of a couple Champions League titles um, on their sleeve either so it's it's football heritage as we've been saying Stevie yeah, um, and I think right. either way it'll be a very I think it'll be a very good um, final I think obviously Dortmund have been underdogs almost the whole time so um, they're going to go in regardless of who else is in the final as underdogs but yeah. having beaten off previously um you know a team that in psg that you know largely people had written off dortmund so um yeah it, i think it's going to be it's going to be great regardless yeah and i'm looking forward to, i think it should be yeah it should, should, should be a great final we've got and hopefully tonight i'm on the watch long i'm gonna hopefully witness i, I just want to see i want to see some gold i want to see a drama like i remember watching that uh, remember that spurs city sort of three three yeah. pain like yeah you know, like that's the kind chaos. of game i want to see tonight i don't know i don't want to watch one 
Like, yeah, no, put in some drama. I want to see a wild challenge. I want to see a Sergio Ramos, you know, like <laughs> RKOing somebody like they did to Salah. I want to see drama in the in, in the game. Double broken know? knees here. Yeah, correct, correct. We need, we need all time at night because okay. I'm, I'm not up here staying late when you watch long for a boring one 0 game. <laughs> well, if it's if it's not if you don't get that from tonight, at least tomorrow there's still Europa, Marseille, and Atlanta one one off the first leg, um, and Atlanta will be hosting them at home. Um, in the second, and Roma are two 0 down to Leverkusen, um, who will Dude, be can still unbeaten. What, like forty nine games? Something stupid. Oh, they, I think they're going to break. I think there's the all time record in the top five leagues. I think they're one win away from it. So that could be yeah. tomorrow night. Um, just nuts. Um, and then Chasing doubled. Course, imagine, Chasing. imagine a, a Bundesliga and Europa. Yeah. That's not a yeah. bad season. Yeah. And as much as I'm bummed that Javi Alonso isn't coming to Liverpool, I'm actually kind of stoked that he's staying there because I really want to see what he does there next season mm. in the Champions League. Like, what does this team look like next season? Yeah. How do they is this a one-season wonder? Because also, what yeah. I really like is the fact that they've talked about, the, that they've been very honest about the fact they said, no, 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 they will sell players. They have to sell players. You know, they can't they can't hold on to some of their, big, their, their better players yeah. because with the money they can get from them, they can build a altogether stronger squad. So I'm enjoying yeah. the approach. You yeah. know, where a lot of these teams, for example, will just go and say, no, we have to hold on to all these players and they lose other players, for yeah. example. And it's they, one of those special teams. Team. You know it will never be the same. It's like yeah. that Monaco 2016 team. You knew Kylian Mbappe was going to leave and, yeah. you know, Bernardo Silva. Leicester. Yeah, Leicester. Yeah. Leicester Morris, team. Kante, Ajax, they were all, they were all out of there. 19 team. You know, you yeah. knew this is like the time and this is the and They've you know, lived up to all the hype and hope. I, I really want them to to go out unbeaten. I think it'll be just insane. Um, pity they didn't actually qualify for the Champions League last season, but alas. Um, well, they're going to win it next season, so. Yeah, maybe. So, and then obviously the Conference League, um, Villa lot losing 2-4 um, to Olympiacos in the first leg at home, so they're going to have to go. Yeah, they're done, dude. They're done. You don't, like Olympiacos home. away is not fun. Yeah, that is not the place you want to go um, when you're behind. Um, and Florentina winning the first leg 3-2. And Stevie, you have the score there in front of you. Yeah, it's, it's currently 1-1. One, one. So Florentina have got a goal ahead. So it's 3-4 on average. Yeah. On average. They, were, they were tied 3-3, three, three, but the penalty now has given wow. Florentina the way back in and probably the edge. Once again, we're speaking about live fixtures, which you'll know the result to. Um, but Stevie... The cricket. Let's move on, and oh, it's goodness. almost the end of the IPL. I don't um, know what, what are we. What are we going to do with this podcast when we can't complain about more IPL happening? You know? <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. We you you, you it. had it until it's gone, bro. Yeah, um, yeah. I think we, we know what you had until it, so you lost. But can we just talk about the fact that earlier today, Sunrise Hyderabad just chased down 166 within 10 overs. I mean, for but 17. 10 wickets, by the way, 10 wicket wins. Yeah, you don't see those often in IPL. You really, you really don't see those. I mean, chasing, you know, 160, um, which, you know, in a typ- typically you'd be like, oh, that's, oh, actually, one, 170. Um, no, 167, they got two wins. Yeah, in 9.4 yeah. overs, by the way. LSG, one like they were bowled out, 165 for four in their 20, 9.4 overs. Um, and they chased it down. Travis Head, just ridiculous. Um, scoring yeah, 81 runs. 95 strike rate. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, you can't even believe that, I mean, as you, you said prior to starting, the year that he has had, even just two, three years, just someone who three years ago you wouldn't have earmarked as someone who is in the top, would have ever been a top three in the world batsman. Dude, three years ago you probably wouldn't have said he was going to be in the top three in Australia. Yeah, you look oh, at the Australia have. yeah, you wouldn't be surprised if he had a good season or two and then got dropped. You know, he was like one of those players, like maybe he's like a bit bullish. He felt, felt like a bit of a Matthew Wade, you know, yeah. just like came around, hit a ball around, like nice, nice stash, across. but you know, is it yeah, sustainable? Nice stash. But no, absolutely thuggish. And, and, um, I mean, sunrises are, he's really gone a long way at putting them in a position to potentially. Um, make the the playoffs now. Um, I mean, it's getting to a stage. If you let him, if you let him face forty balls, you've lost the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Because he's scoring, he's going at at least two hundred. At least. Yeah. So if he, if he scored, if 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 he, if he faced forty balls, he scored over hundred runs, and Sunrise are putting on two hundred plus. 
Yeah. I mean, his strike yeah, that's, rate that's for the whole tournament is 533 runs at a strike rate of 201. So yeah. that's literally it, right? Um, just, you know, 61 fours, 31 sixes, um, average of 53. So he, he's, he's going ballistic. Um, he's only a couple runs shy of, of Virat and Gaikwad who are leading the runs, um, the top of the runs list. So um, Sunrise is putting themselves up there. Um, but our boy Mark Rupert, Stevie, he's been dropped recently in the last yeah. coming games. And it reminds me of a, another um, Proteus team going to the World Cup with an out-of-form captain um, who hadn't been batting well. Um, that was obviously Temba Bavuma a couple of years ago and the pressure that he came under to drop himself. Do you see um, murmurs of that coming out in the lead-up to the World Cup? Obviously, because he's at the IPL, he's not going to be going to that series in West Indies, so he's not going to be able to get time um, time there. Um, what do you make of his form and, and what that means for his spot at the Proteus? Weird enough, the one thing I've always thought about T20s is that international T20s and franchise T20s are so different. Um, I don't know why that is. Why? But no, I think you know, you look at some of the performers, for example, and and there are players who have performed for years in the IPR that have never performed in the international circuit, and vice versa. Who? Um, you look at uh, David Milan, for example, was the world number one T20 yeah. player for two, three years, couldn't get himself an IPL contract. Tobias Shams has never had an IPL contract. And has been well, has been one of the best T20 bowlers in the world for the last two to three years. Uh, yes, he's a spinner and trying to get in there, and he can't yeah. bat, which doesn't help him. But yeah. it's it's an interesting one. So I mean, form for example, I think things would be very different in in the Caribbean and in the US from a from a conditions point of view. Very interested to see what the US play is like. Mm. Um, the, I, I don't worry about Markham. I think he he's a bit of a mentality monster these days. I think he's gone through a lot of. Um, um, He's gone. He's gone through a lot of a lot a lot of sort of uh, soul searching. Uh, you know, he was dropped of various formats. He had to come back, and and yeah. he's had some very good years. So I don't think that. I think I think when you look at his form in a, in a Proteus jersey, you can't, yeah. can't question it, right? His T Twenty international stats are insane. Yeah. Um. I you know. I, I still. You know. He's got the captaincy. Get him going. He'll hopefully he'll he'll come right. But it's just a. It's a pity, and hopefully he's able to kind of get back into... into yeah, I, I'm sure they'll give him a couple of games towards before the playoffs because they will want him in the playoffs if he's but playing. Also, well. to be fair, I do feel like this um, Sunrise's middle order has been haunted by how good tra- their the opening stands have been. Um, yeah. I mean, they've just got so many runs early on that we haven't even seen them that much of an opportunity. And when he has been given one, he has been able to take them. Um, but... It's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's resulted in now um, being dropped. But Stevie, after this result, we see the first team bowing out. And it's Mumbai Indians. Everyone's saying they're just starting badly to have their late revival. Mm, Not to be this yeah. season under Hardik Pandya. Um, and I mean, he's and coming out so much flack. Um, and it also means that Brevis and Mapaka will be bowing out of the competition. Unfortunately, we obviously love our, watching our South Africans um, and they haven't been playing too much. Maybe now that they're out of the competition, they'll actually be given a bit of a crack, um, which will be fun to watch. Mm, yeah, it'd be cool to see him. Hopefully, him and Parker gets another game. Um, you know, you might as well, really, play a couple of yeah. youngsters, see what they can do. Uh, I think Mark Barks under a lot of pressure. Um, I've really enjoyed the fact that they let go of Stubbs and he's literally given the middle finger mm. and gone to become mm. one of the most important bats before a... Most re- South African, the most former South African at this IPL. Oh, yeah. No, he's been absolutely world-class in different scenarios. And, um, 41 to... of 20 balls yesterday. Um, DC yeah, no, making he's... a proper charge at that at those playoffs from seemingly out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, somebody was, was, was talking about, um, you know, he's the he's the big, he's, you know, he's like, oh, we've got our replacement for Dave Miller as a finisher. I think Stubbs is so much more than just a finisher. I think he'll be our premier batsman yeah. in, in a couple of years. I think he genuinely has the talent. Yeah. He can carry, carry in innings, um, hold an in, but also come in I, I yeah I, I I'd, I'd much rather Miller I think Miller and, and Klaus are not better getting going from ball mm. one I think give give Stubbs five balls um to to knock it about at you know just over a run a ball and then and then he'll he'll launch um he's so good at rotating the strike which is something you see in all the all the best cricketers around the world just when you're under pressure just knock it down for one knock it for two yeah. um you know not having to force the big hit and I think that's what um, you know, some of the mistakes he probably made in the last couple of seasons where 
he just wanted to milk everything. So we're seeing, we're slowly seeing an amazing mark, uh, arc rather of, of Stubbs and, and in his career. And geez, as you said, a couple of episodes ago, the closest thing that we've kind of seen to AB de Villiers in a, in a Proteus jersey. So I'm really, really excited to see him at the T20 World Cup. Yeah, I, I, as, yeah I, he's probably the most excited I'm, I am to watch, to be honest. Because um, I think that if he and um, Klaassen pitch up, then I think we become serious contenders in, in, in that World Cup. Obviously, the bowling... I mean, and and one, one other bit high up the order. We need, a, we need Quinny or... Yeah, I mean, look, we need a Shamsi to go and take, you know, 20 wickets in the tournament or whatever. You know, we, we yeah. also need that. But I do think that our batting hopes, you know, those two being the form players in the IPL mm. um, are, are definitely best placed to... Mm. <coughs> Put in some big, big, big shifts, uh, but a lot of yeah. selection question, question marks for for Rob Walter on this IPL. You know, Nandre Berger started like a house on fire. He hasn't had found game time that easy to come by recently. All our bowlers have been dispatched. People are saying, "Well, we, you know, maybe Malky Janssen shouldn't be going because he's had an bad IPL." And I was like, "Yeah, but you go back and look at the SA twenty, and mm. Janssen was phenomenal across all the various facets of the game." So we we have very, very uh, short memories. I think you know we yeah. look at the IPL yeah, and, and we, really we often the treat the IPL as the nation, of course. Um, yeah, but it's always it is. Um, I think it's equally as competitive as most international um, cricket games. Just that's the caliber um, of the cricket itself. So, and I just think it's, it's a, it is a good benchmark. So, and this is why we just even if they're not playing well, we still want to see selfishly see South Africa play. Right? No, we do. And um, and and I mean, for example, you know, Australia will be looking at Travis here, thinking this makes you know, he yeah. makes us potential favourites. You know, with with Mitch Stark the way he is you look at him yeah. and you think well this is what makes australia you know a very big boys so there's no doubt about that but you know the, the ip there, there has been other cricket apart from the ipl where some of these guys have been playing really well and you know it's not that long ago so hopefully yeah. i still i'm still feeling optimistic about the world cup i mean we're not gonna come out and say we're gonna go we win it um because i don't think we're quite there yet. <laughs> we might do it <laughs> maybe I, well i always think if we're gonna win a world cup it's gonna be one that we're not gonna expect to win you know, it'll be that, like a bit that, of a. I think that's a once... what we reduced ourselves to recently. Um, you know, which is which which feels like it, it's hurting less, <laughs> which doesn't make yeah. it doesn't make it better. Um, Correct. But Stevie, let's get into um, the predictions of this week. We're going to have um, United versus Arsenal grudge match, um, Bulls versus Glasgow in the URC, and then Aston Villa um, versus Liverpool. Um, Let's start with your beloved United hosting the Gooners. Um, you got a score in mind, Stevie. You ready for this? Oh, I'm ready. I'm so ready. Okay. Okay, yeah. I team don't know score. I, I team have by... Oh, no. Yeah. Score team. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll count us in. Three, two, one, two, no. Three, off. one, United. Come on, the lads. Okay. okay. Yeah. To be fair, I can go with whatever I want because any United win will give me the win. And you're going to go Arsenal. So any United win is going to give me the, the prediction. Win. So I might as well be bold and say, let's go and operate. Let's go and just go and okay. dust them. Let's just go and bury them. I want to see Arteta crying. I want to see Saka crying, you know. <laughs> just Arsenal tears is, is what we pray for. Yeah, I, would, I, mean, I mean, Declan Rice didn't come to us. So I want to see him crying. I want to see Kobe Manu just bury him. Yeah, because I mean, Declan Rice is dead to me. Yeah, you'll see them some distraught faces if they do lose this weekend. Um, yeah, good. I'm then, in for it. Um, let's go. Let's actually keep it in the Premier League. Um, let's go Aston Villa, Liverpool, Villa hosting um, the Reds. Um, and they will be off a uh, either a European exit, in which case they'll be bit down, but ex maybe extra fired up because they'll know yeah. that they'll have to. Um, you know, this is now the only thing they can play for in the season. What's really been an unbelievable season. Um, I believe the reverse fixture was 3-0 Liverpool. Um, an unbelievable goal from Savage Lai. It's back when my dreams were were sky high. Um, still had a soul. Yeah, I still had a soul. Um, but, yeah, do you have a score in mind there, Stevie? Um, yeah, I do. Okay. I'm ready to in your, your counter I'm ready, I, Okay, so... Three, two, one, two, one, two, one Liverpool. What did you say? Did you say, did you two, say one Villa as well? No, two, one Liverpool. Okay. Um, I want to be responsible. Last this. time, do you want a budge? Yeah, I'll go two nil. Okay. 
I just think Liverpool just hate, hate a clean sheet. I was actually going to go one yeah, nil. So do I, but uh, yeah, hey, um, got, got a bank on, got a bank on uh, some 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 other stuff. Hey, listen, I might as well go big this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, and then we'll go into the URC Bulls hosting um, Glasgow at Loftus um, this weekend in a game which could define where the semi-final finals will be. Um, Stevie, this one is obviously team by points. Um, very, I'm interested to see which way you go with this one. Um, but I'm ready when you are. Yeah. You want to count this in or Mark Arnison? in? Mark Arnison. in. Okay, do I have a number? Yeah. Three, two, one. Bulls by Bulls 10. Bulls by 10. Fuck. We need to stop doing oh, this. Oh, really? this is nuts. We're going to have more of these than we have anyone else. Okay, so uh, my turn to budge. Oh. Mm, I'm going to change one mine down. to Bulls by 12. If you want, yeah. if you want to go lower, or you can go higher. Um, I, well, Bulls have had rest, as have Glasgow. And, uh, no, I'm going to go Bulls 12. Bulls 12. So you'll, you'll take Bulls by 12. Oh, did you want to move? I said I'm happy to go Bulls by 12 on my okay, side. Okay, you go Bulls by 12 then. You go Bulls by 12. Okay, cool. Locked it in. Stevie, thank you for the show. Yeah, um, thank you. Thanks for the Enjoy the enjoy, go, go give those legs a rest and learn how to walk again. I, I'm trying, brother. I'm trying. Trust me. Um, don't worry. Everyone's seeing everyone's seeing my my medal. Um, and yeah, good. Um, yeah, hopefully now you know we, we move some momentum in this in the score sheets here. I mean, two fun gone for Liverpool, but you know tides are turning. We had a horror month last month. We're back. Maybe United win. Um, this weekend, and then you back as well. We finish the season on a high. Yeah, well, I need, I need, I need something to start to start operating my side. So hopefully tonight, hopefully this next week is is the return. Yeah, but Stevie, enjoy your watch along tonight. Um, Thank you very much. Yeah, so time to and, get involved and watch uh, some some football editors have play out in front on the screen in front of me. Absolutely, and then by next week we'll know what the final is. Um, yeah, we'll but everyone else, thank you very much for watching. Please do smash the like on the video. Please do share it. Um, with all the friends and family and the aunties and uncles and even the grandparents. Because even you know, people, they even also, people you don't like, you know. Just <laughs> just just say it to anybody. <laughs> they also need to know that Jude Bellingham might be in the race, um, race for the Ballon d'Or this season. Okay, you right. know, what would Correct. they do without that information? There's just so um, many there's so there's so many there's so much fruit of, fruit of knowledge in this thing. So many gems here that everybody deserves yeah. to know. Nobody deserves to be sitting in the signs. Or and or just to show people that Siamusuku is Winning secret formula is the shoulder pads. Bring back the yeah. shoulder pads, bro. If you're a young ten, you could be. You might. You might be missing this trick. Exactly. Exactly. Stevie, thank you very much. We'll chat to you. Well check in this time next week. Yeah, look forward to it. Cool. Cheers, guys.